Signs of strength in the cybersecurity space. CrowdStrike reporting strong fourth quarter results and guidance came in above expectations. Joining us now is Lane Best, Deep Instinct CEO, also former CEO of Palo Alto Networks and former COO of Zscaler. Lane, it's good to see you. Thank you for having us. So you know, we're talking off camera, Lane, about this, how CrowdStrike just reported. Obviously, investors really like what they heard. We also, though, recently heard from Palo Alto Networks. Now there, investors were disappointed. We heard the company kind of talking about fatigue, right, amongst some customers, how do we how do we square this? How do we look at these reports? What are the, yes. the themes we should take away here? Yeah, well, I'll say you had Rob Owens on just before me, and the trend that he alluded to in terms of strength in the cyber tech sector will continue. It's really a question of where the customers need help. And what Nikesh referred to is that there's been so much money spent, and they still have challenges and for example I'll go to a dinner after this with 20 cyber executives and I'll ask them the question okay how many of you feel you're well protected mm. and they'll raise their hands how many of you think that your threats can be prevented and the answer is no so the fatigue is coming with all the money that's been spent CrowdStrike great company wonderful results but they detect and remediate they don't predict and prevent and that's really what got me off my bench again to do another company. The AI generative threat is going to raise the bar and these fatigued buyers are going to need more than company that are just simply acquiring broader uh, sets of security solutions to strengthen their wallet share with these customers. They need prevention. Mm. So just to put a fine point on this, what most of the big cybersecurity companies do now is they deal with the threats when they come. That's right. And rather than stopping them before they get in the door. They don't have the AI capability. Not all machine learning is the same, and everybody will talk about their machine learning, but there's a technology called deep learning, and that's why we call ourselves Deep Instinct. Um, and this is a level above. It really is the most sophisticated segment of AI there is. And unless you really have this built into your platform, you're really gonna essentially be addressing threats already uh, hitting your hard disk. You talk about data protection, many companies are already infected and they don't know it. Now, I, a layperson, I've always heard, right, while the cops are getting smarter, in your yes. case, the attackers are also getting smarter. That's right. So how do you keep up that's with right. that? That's right, and that's a very good question. As I say, you can't uh, fight fire of a, uh, of a house fire with a garden hose. The AI that's being developed now, using generative AI for attacks, is very hard to get away. It's not just deep fakes where people are you know, uh, imitating somebody's voice. It's very creative ways to get around a lot of the security that customers are fatigued in buying. So you have to have a more sophisticated AI to fight it. Uh, our engineering teams at Deep Instinct are amongst the smartest that have been on both the defensive and attack and uh, have developed a platform that essentially can predict and prevent. And all of these companies, Zscaler, Palo Alto Networks, CrowdStrike, that are playing very well with this momentum and the momentum that will continue, are going to need to, beyond just broadening their platforms, they're going to have to go deep, no pun intended, mm -hmm. but deep into the AI to actually prevent. That is what customers need and want. Is it, I'm interested, who poses, in your opinion, sort of the greatest cybersecurity risk at this point? I mean, are we talking about rogue states, yeah, criminals, both? It is both, but okay. um, it's an election year, so we're going to see probably a lot in the nation state attack type mm -hmm. of things. And it's, you know, people are going to use that as an excuse for perhaps election results, but the, the, the nation state attacks are going to continue. Um, but let's face it. Uh, the simple generative AI tools that are available today, LLM models, um, can help even moderately sophisticated uh, bad guys, bad actors, mm. profiteers to launch uh, and relaunch ransomware attacks. Mm. I I'm going to ask that question even more specifically when it comes to our presidential election mm. here in this country. We know that Russia has been involved in past uh, elections trying to influence things through social media, certainly China. Yes. Will they succeed? Do you think that they actually 
have influenced past presidential elections, and is there a high chance that they will again? Yeah, well, I, I'm not necessarily going to make a political commentary. I don't think, personally, I don't think results uh, uh, were impacted, uh, and I'll state that pretty well. The attacks are taking place. I will say that our federal government um, has invested in some of the people we recruit um, are people who've had great careers in terms of prevention in the federal government. So I actually think our federal government is very well prepared. I don't mean the actual voting results. I mean how people vote in influencing oh, psychology. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, look, at the end of the day, um, uh, I think there will always be um, attacks in cyber. This is going to be what I believe to be one of the next um, frontiers of warfare. Um, I, I believe this is a time, and I'm excited about the AI opportunities in cyber. Uh, you know, we talk about where the opportunities will be in cyber, they will be in AI. Uh, we can talk about other places where there's AI opportunity. Cyber is going to be the place that's most needed, and, and I'm very encouraged um, by what I see in terms of the early ability for us to outmaneuver the bad actors.